Hey guys, so I know what kinds of things you want to see. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Although a lot of modelers eschew these IHC, HM, and River Rossi locomotives, I don't mind having a lot of them run on my track. Uh, I've got this one running. You'll be able to see it on an earlier video. It's a nice C-liner. I've got a few of these E8s um, in both Burlington and Burlington Northern and a couple other lines, and this Krauss Maffei. I mean, I like these things, and they make a lot of models that I can't find anywhere else in any other vendor. Yeah, sometimes they're a little bit toy-like or the details a little bit varying, but you know what? They're fun, and that's the bottom line for me. The issue is in prototypicality, and I don't mind sometimes that these look a little bit more hobbyist or toy-like. The problem is, is I run DCC and not DC, and particularly a lot of these older River Rossi AHM and IHCs are, uh, they're DC, so I've got to convert them. Now, these are fairly straightforward for conversion, but there are a couple of gotchas, and I want to go over those because if you don't properly plan for how to convert these, you may run into some problems later. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this um, Burlington Northern E8B unit for you. And here is the chassis I'm going to convert. So um, it's interesting that you'll notice there's only one wire going into it. The first time I saw that, I wasn't quite sure what to do with it. But now that I've figured it out, I'll help you. Before you begin any kind of analog to digital conversion, you are going to want to make sure that the locomotive that you have in your hand is actually going to run. So you absolutely have to test it out on a DC track first. So if the motor doesn't run, you could be in a lot of trouble. And you could actually, if you're really not careful, you could blow out um, your DCC decoder before things even begin. Now, one thing about River Rossi's AHMs and IHCs, number one, I think they're mostly made by River Rossi. I think some of these are made by Mahano, um, but they are very sparse on pickups. One thing to look for are the traction tires. This tells you a lot about how these work. And on this particular model, which is a Fairbanks Moore C-liner, we have a vertical motor but actually the pickups are only on the front wheels. They're only on the front and they're carried to the motor by these two wires, by the red wire and the white wire. Now, sort of because of convention, generally speaking, the engineer side or the right side of the locomotive generally considered to be the positive. It has the red wire here, at least in theory, and the white wire will be the conductors or the left side. Now, we can use a voltmeter here to test to see if, in fact, the engineer side goes to the red wire and the conductor side goes to the white. I'll isolate the engineer's wire, at least what I think is the engineer wire, and put the voltmeter onto the right wheels, and let's see what we get. So in fact, this red wire is going to go to the red wire on the DCC controller and the white wire is going to go to the black. For some of the smaller chassis, like the one I just told you, there's only one set of pickups and those are on the front. But for this longer E8, what I'm looking at are two sets of pickups, one on the front trucks and one on the back. And when I look at the back, what I see are traction tires on the engineer side. In other words, the right side of the chassis. And based off of this, I can pretty much be guaranteed that the wipers are going to pick up the conductor side or the negative side, which is generally correlated with the black wire on a DCC controller. In fact, the wire leading to the motor from those wipers is indeed black. But I'm going to show you in a minute, don't count on this, but in this particular case, the black wire is colored correctly, and that is eventually going to go into the black wire of the controller, as I just said. And I'll go ahead and prove this to you here. Since we know that the rear motor is picking up the conductor side electricity with this black wire, that means the blue wire is going to be the engineer's or the right side of the chassis. I'll go ahead and probe this out a couple different ways so that you can see that in fact, yes, the front truck is going to pick up the engineer's side. Um, 
now, right? We had to be a little bit careful because the wire is blue and that's not a standard color. If everything was perfect in this world, this wire would be red. As you can see, when I probe the conductor side wheels, there's no continuity whatsoever. So yes, indeed, the front truck is responsible for only one side, the engineer's side. And that's why I'm going to make a recommendation here a little bit later on about the best way to work this. I want you to be careful because the wire color may be totally wrong. Again, on this particular chassis, the traction tires are on the engineer side, which means the pickup are gonna be on the conductor side, yet the wire is red. So don't trust the wires that you find in these things. Should be black, or at least it could be black, I guess, if they were being really generous and spotting you properly, but they're not. And once again, the wire that's blue is actually the red wire. It is actually the engineer side wire. So yeah, uh, leave it up to people to have non-standard wiring. If your automobile maker worked with some British car or something like that, <laughs> you're used to this already. Um, but again, this if it was truly red, it should be picking up off of the engineer's side, but it's not. The chassis I'll modify for you today, well, it's actually for me, is interesting in that there is no wire. We see that the traction tires are still on the engineer's side, but there's no wire where we saw the black and red one on those other two chassis. Here we know we're picking up off of the conductor's side, but there's just no wire going up to the motor. Um, so what's going on there? What's actually taking place is that this little metal strip here is taking the place of the red or black wire that we saw in the last two chassis. And this is what's transmitting power to the negative side of the motor. The positive side is still blue, but the negative side is just a strip of metal. What I'm going to do is just basically saw this in half, and I'm going to use one side as the pad for the track connector and the other side as the pad for the motor connector. Uh, I'm going to use a Dremel tool and just grind through it. You can cut through it if you want. However you want to do, you just don't want to disturb it very much because you don't want to pull it out and you don't want to destroy it. So I think grinding through it is the best idea that I've come up with, and I've done several of these now. So without further ado, let's just grind into this thing and make two pads out of it. Looks good. That's just what I was trying to accomplish is two separate pieces of metal that I can solder into. I think we've got a good starting point for our conversion. Effectively, I've cut the quote unquote wire in half for the conductor side, and now I'm going to cut the wire in half for the engineer side. So we'll just snip that, and now one of these is going to get the orange wire leading to the motor, and the other one's going to get the red so that it can pick up the engineer side track voltage. When I'm converting a locomotive that has limited track pickup, like pretty much all of these, I have a tendency to use Soundtrack Tsunami products. This really works perfect in this particular case because Tsunamis have plug and play capability with their line of power capacitors. And you just plug it in, there's no soldering. And not only that, this particular Soundtrack has two dual EMD 567s, and the one I'm going to need is this one here, which is um, Selection 3 on CV123. If you have a limited track pickup, it is my suggestion to try to either use some sort of power pack or some sort of capacitor because it's very easy to run out of power quickly, uh, particularly on a track like mine where I don't have powered points. Anytime I have a limited pickup chassis, it's it's just a real pain going over my points. Things stall out. It's really aggravating. So some sort of capacitor is necessary. And again, only the front truck is going to help for the engineer's side power, and only the rear is responsible for the conductor. So definitely we could run into problem with my switches anyhow, and you might have the same on yours. I think one area where ESU lock sound, and actually use ESU lock sound about 80% of the time, um, you have to solder on a current keeper. And I have the soldering skills to do it, 
but when I just don't have to, I just don't like to. Um, so that's, that's my sole reason. Um, in any case, you can see here, the area that we are going to plug the current keeper in has a lot of shrink wrap that's collapsed around it. So what I do is I just take my little knife here and I cut around it until I have enough of the connector exposed so that it's easy to plug the current keeper into. Just a little bit, tiny bit more peeling and I think we'll have it here. Just a little bit more cutting. And once we do, um, we will be able to plug this current keeper in and we don't have to worry nearly as much about how much electricity these Riverasi trucks are picking up. So just a tiny bit more. And once we do that, looks like we've got it. Just have to kind of trim off this last, uh, or I guess we have to make it look a little bit nicer. So we trim this off. I think we're good to go. Okay. When we pick up our current keeper, we can see that um, there is just this little connector and it will just plug right into the receptacle in the actual Soundtrack Tsunami 2 unit itself. It'll fit in there pretty snug. Be a little bit careful though, these wires are very <laughs> fragile, particularly inside of the connector. It's really easy to rip them out, and once you do that, it's really difficult to get them back in. So here we go. We are going to connect the conductor side track pickup into the bottom here. This is gonna go in the bottom because the pad that'll actually take electricity into the motor is the one on top. So we'll just solder this here, make sure it's connected nice and tight, and we've got that done. Now the correlating wire for the conductor's pickup is the gray one. This is the motor negative, so it is going to go on to the upper pad we just created. So again, the black, is specifically for the conductor side electrical pickup from your track and the gray is the motor negative that we are going to solder into the top pad so black on bottom gray on top and once we have that make sure it's tight and it's on there we've got half of this finished so the conductor side electricity will come in through the rear truck and it will go into the decoder here you can see it, and then the negative will go on the top. Sorry, the photo isn't the greatest quality. This next one will be a little bit easier. Again, the corresponding wire for the engineer's side track pickup is red, and the motor positive that goes along with it is orange. So they made them pretty close in color. Sometimes they're actually a little bit too close, and I screw them up, but that's what we want to do. It, we want to take the electricity that's picked up from the front truck and pump it into the red wire of the decoder. And once we do that, we will take the orange, which is the motor positive, and we will connect that to the other half of the wire that we cut that leads directly into the motor. Now let me solder that in here, and I think we're good to go. Orange wire is going into positive, the red is going into the pickup off of the front trucks. As soon as I finish this, we will be okay. I'll go ahead and just seal up these joins with the shrink wrap, and I grab this shrink wrap. Um, there's some that's included in the current keeper packet, just in case you decide to cut off the connector and use the wires bare. But since I didn't do that, I plugged it straight in, I can just use the remainder to protect this and uh, protect the wire. And I'm going to go ahead and connect a speaker I had lying around to the two purple wires. Go ahead and solder those in, and we will, just like before, take the shrink uh, tubing that came with the current keeper, and we will put that in there. And since this is a B unit, I can cut off um, the all the accessory wires because there's just no headlights on this particular B unit, and here's what we have when we're finished. I'm just gonna quickly test this on a DC track to make sure it powers up.
Sure enough, it does. And if you notice, when I pick this up off the track so that there's no power going into it, it keeps running, which is exactly what we want because that's exactly what can happen. Because again, we only have one truck committed to each side of the pickups. All right, I'll go ahead and pump a digital signal into it now and you'll see the behavior is the same, except now I can run it back and forth at will. Perfect, that's exactly what I'm looking for. And once again, analog or digital doesn't make a difference. If I pick this thing up while it has power going to it, it'll continue to run. complete the effect I just have to put on the shell and we'll start it up again and boy I'm really liking this model it took me a while to find one of these B units that was powered and I'm just going to really enjoy this I can tell My full Burlington Northern consist isn't complete yet, um, but I'm gonna put this on the track and what I'm going to show you is this thing running over my points. And again, my points are unpowered and they cause a lot of things problems if they don't have good continuity. But with the current keeper in there, um, you'll see that it just doesn't stop, keeps going. And um, I'll do it one more time with the point going the opposite direction and you'll see that it works fine. Um, after this, what I'll do is I'll put a, I guess there's no reason that a B unit couldn't truck things around till I get my A unit and my other B unit ready to go. And um, you'll see that when it passes over the points, it works fine too. So yeah, enjoy this for a second and I'll get back to you. Well, there you have it. I hope this helped, especially if you're making conversions from vertical motors in one of these IHC, HM, and River Rossi locomotives. And hey, it really helps me out if you would subscribe and leave some comments and like. I'm looking forward to being with you next time. Hey, take care and happy model railroading.